And Americans are still feeling the pinch when it comes to food, especially when dining out. See as the Jolene Kent hit the drive through for a price check. Consumers are fed up with higher prices. Tell me why it was $17 for three filet of fishes. Huh? Who told y'all y'all was that good to be charging that much for y'all food? In April, groceries ticked up slightly compared to a year ago, but fast food prices soared 4.8%. How does that affect your budget? When you're paying more for fast food, what does that do? It makes it harder to live, but then you have to save. So you're like, I can't have my fast food if I save. In fact, over the last 10 years, analysis from Finance Buzz found a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese meal has more than doubled. Taco Bell's beefy five layer burrito spiked almost 200 percent, and a Chipotle barbacoa burrito is 87 percent more expensive. Popeye's and Burger King menu items also jumped. As a result, KFC reported slower foot traffic and McDonald's missed profit expectations for the first time in two years. This is lower income earners are spending less on fast food. To make their menu more affordable, McDonald's is now considering adding a new value meal. Can I have one McChicken, please? One medium fry and one medium Diet Coke? Right now, all of this costs $8. And to give customers relief, McDonald's may soon make it a $5 value meal nationwide. I think that'd be great. I would love that. The deal is set to start on June 25th and run about a month. McDonald's is joining Burger King, Wendy's and Jack in the Box already offering similar value meals. The typical American consumer is much more focused on value now for a variety of reasons. Meal bundles, whether it is at quick service or table service restaurants, have become much more popular. All right, guys. So we got to talk about some very fascinating developments in the fast food and fast casual dining restaurant industry that is struggling due to inflation. The cost of food is going up. The cost of going out to eat is going up. The cost of fast food is going up to the point where people are just choosing, hey, we're going to eat at home, okay? We're going to choose not to overpay for fast food. We're going to choose not to overpay for fast casual dining, okay? This is what people are saying and that is resulting in a decrease in foot traffic that is causing a lot of these businesses to struggle some of these businesses are flat out going bankrupt but for the businesses that can survive there's kind of a race to the bottom now in regards to trying to provide a value meal in order to get customers back in the door because again the reason why people buy fast food is because of affordability okay when you talk about fast casual dining or fast food, the target audience should be middle-class Americans, lower middle-class Americans, and Americans on the lower part of the income scale, okay? This is the ideal target audience, and when that target audience says, hey, you know what? We're not going to buy this overpriced food, uh, that creates a big problem because, again, these restaurants, uh, they like to sell in volume. This is how they actually really make money, and is that the point now with some restaurants like McDonald's are getting desperate to the point where they're basically trying to offer food almost at a loss in order to get people in the door. This is why they're now offering the $5 value meal. Take a look. McDonald's is rolling out a special $5 value menu next month to try to lure some price conscious consumers back to its restaurants as inflation sticks around. Will it work? That's the question of the morning. And John Ford is here to weigh in. What do you think? Well, Andrew, uh, yes, a $5 value meal and a national ad campaign will have people loving it again. The problem is consumers at the lower end of the income spectrum have just been painfully stretched lately. As we saw in Wednesday's CPI report, rent prices are hogging family budgets, leaving less for splurges like eating out. It's not just McDonald's issue. Remember Starbucks earnings two weeks ago? Ugly. More consumers looking for deals. Same with fast food rival Wendy's, where the CFO recently backed off the idea of hiking prices during busy times. I'm sure Chipotle is doing well, but they're still in growth mode compared with McDonald's, which is everywhere. So what will $5 at McDonald's in a value menu get you? Well, it sounds great. You get a sandwich, either a McChicken or a McDouble, which I had never heard of, but apparently it's a budget double cheeseburger mm. with only one slice of cheese. Small fries, small drinks, four nuggets. Now, getting this value menu approved by the franchisees was like passing an amendment to the Constitution. They sent it back, said the numbers don't work. Coca-Cola had to break the deadlock by kicking in a few million dollars of incentives. But now, McDonald's can do a national ad campaign with a simple message with a low price that people want, Andrew.
Yeah, so you see, now you heard that, okay? This only lasts for about a month, okay? And I think what they're going to try to do is that they're going to say, hey, $5, you can come here and get a McDouble, McChicken, some fries, a drink, uh, and then, you know, hey, maybe you can get something else, okay? They'll sell you an apple pie. They'll try to upsell you on something else, some premium item, in order for them to actually really make money off of the deal, right? That's probably what they're going to end up doing. But regardless, you know, I remember back in the day, where for five dollars you can get like an actual premium burger, uh, a medium fry, and a nice drink, right? I remember when five dollars would buy you a lot more than again the McDouble, which is just a very small chicken sandwich, uh, you know, four nuggets and I don't know some small fry and, and a drink, right? But you know, I, I personally think that the inflation hurting the fast food industry is a good thing. Okay, I think that for the health of this country. Uh, it is better for Americans to eat at home and not eat poison every day, okay? Cook their own food, consume less calories, and uh, hopefully that can help out with America's obesity problem. So I don't think that the fast food issue when it comes to dealing with inflation is completely 100% bad. I don't think it's all bad, okay? I think there's some positives in the sense that, again, less people are eating fast food, and I hope that that's a permanent trend. Um, but... Again, when you talk about inflation, it's not just affecting fast food. It's also affecting the broader economy and fast casual dining, which is, I believe, a step up from fast food. But yet, again, the target audience is still the same. Okay, middle class, lower middle class, uh, people on the lower end of the income spectrum uh, wanting to eat out for an affordable cost but have a nice experience, right? A nice casual dining experience without breaking the bank. However, again, that is impossible because a lot of these fast casual dining restaurants have increased their prices to the point where people just don't think it's worth um, eating at these places, right? If you're going to break the bank, you might as well break the bank for an actual nice place rather than to eat at a Red Lobster's or a, a TGI Friday's or a Denny's, okay? And that has resulted in these restaurants shutting down across the country. I mean, I did a story just probably a week ago on Red Lobster uh, declaring bankruptcy. So, Let's actually uh, learn more about what's going on here because, again, the restaurants that can't play the race to the bottom game when it comes to price uh, in order to try to fight back against the decline in business due to inflation, uh, these restaurants are basically going out of business, right? So um, if you can't sell at scale, <laughs> right, uh, you're going to have a hard time in Biden's economy. These of fast casual chain restaurants coming to an end just this week. Two popular restaurants, Red Lobster and Applebee's, announced store closures all across the country, including locations in North Carolina. They're joining a wave of other household named chains forced to either shut down or shrink their real estate footprint in recent years. Queen City News Chief Business Correspondent Taylor Young joining us now. now Taylor. What's happening to some of our favorite chains? I know it's really disappointing and sad. So in the last couple of years, there has been really a perfect storm in the restaurant industry. Not only are they facing financial pressure following the pandemic, but they're also facing sort of a, a mindset change or shift from their customers who are also struggling financially themselves. So this is a list of the recent closures um, that have closed really in the last year or so. So this week, Red Lobster has temporarily closed 87 of its restaurants in 27 states, four of which are located right here in North Carolina. Also recently, Applebee's announced plans to downsize, closing between 25 to 35 of its restaurants. No timeline or locations have been publicly announced yet. And earlier this year, TGI Friday said it will be closing 36 of its underperforming locations. And last year, Denny's closed doors of the 57 of its restaurants. Other change, chains like Hardee's, Outback, State Steakhouse, Boston Market, and Cracker Barrel have also closed locations this year. Yeah, so again, this is the exact opposite of the story that's being told to us by the mainstream liberal media, right? If you listen to the mainstream liberal media, Joe Scarborough, MSNBC, the economy is great, right? Everything is amazing, okay? And it's just a Republican conspiracy theory that the private sector is not doing well, okay? <laughs> Except it's, it's actually really reality, okay? This is what I talk about on almost a daily basis now, the fact that you're seeing a uh, business out the business out the business uh, close down or issue layoffs because of the fact that the private sector is not doing well. OK, we are in what we call stagflation. Right. I personally believe that the private sector is probably in a recession. But again, a lot of the numbers are being masked by the fact that, again, we're spending so much money. Right. Government spending 
uh, is subsidizing the economy, right, when it comes to these government jobs, the jobs report, and is hiding the real disaster that is what's happening in the Biden economy, right? So what you're seeing here, again, is a lot of these restaurants that we used to know and love, again, like a Red Lobster or an Applebee's or a TGI Fridays or a Denny's, they just can't operate anymore. They're just closing down. And a lot of these restaurants, some of these restaurants, like, for example, the Denny's, um, you know, they're closing down due to crime, right? In places like Oakland, some of those locations, they can't operate due to the fact that it's not even safe, okay? It's not safe to operate in some of these liberal states and in these liberal cities due to soft on crime uh, policies from the Democrats. So, again, it's a variety of things, okay? If you're in one of these blue states as a restaurant, I feel bad for you, okay? Because, again, you got to deal with the crime problem. Uh, not making it safe for people to even go out and eat, right? Uh, they, they can't eat out without worrying about something being stolen out of their car. Then on top of that, the increase in minimum wage. So now you got to pay everybody $15, $20 an hour. On top of that, you have Biden's inflation uh, that contributes to the rising cost of food and supplies, okay? Uh, and then you got to deal with high taxes as well too, okay? If you actually do make any money, you got to give most of it to the government, how can you operate, right? How can you operate in this type of economy, especially if you are in a blue state? I don't get it. I really don't. And I know that these are really loved restaurants, um, but we're kind of seeing them dwindle in terms of their real estate footprint. This is my childhood. I mean, <laughs> these were huge, right? In the 90s and the early 2000s. So what's changed since then? So there are a couple of factors really happening all at the same time here. So inflation, we know that's nothing new. Um, inflation really impacts all industries across the board, but really specifically the restaurant industry. So food prices alone have skyrocketed. And these mid-tier restaurants like your Applebee's, like your Chili's, um, they really market to the fact of their affordability. So it kind of puts them in a box in terms of how much they praise their uh, raise their price without pushing people away. Now, on top of that, wages have increased and so has rent. So these restaurants that are renting, you know, their locations, that of course is increasing. Um, and when we talk about these, the restaurant industry as a whole, I mean, this is a very small, tight margin in terms of profits. So when you have all of these different costs increases, whether it's rent, whether it's wages, lost revenue, I mean, that is going to unfortunately lead to closures nationwide. I mean, so obviously consumer here is too. Mm -hmm. How do they come into play with all this? Because some people maybe looking at Red Lobster saying it's time for me to break up with my Cheddar Bay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the mindset actually has changed <laughs> drastically with um, customers, you know, even if you do love them. Um, but, you know, you used to be able to go to this restaurant with your entire family and spend maybe $30, $40. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, you could be spending more than 100 So people would are really kind of looking at that and saying, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe I'm gonna stick with my fast food like a Chipotle, McDonald's or Domino's. And if they do wanna spend more money, they'll go to higher end places instead. So, you know, every single um, company that announced closures this year mentioned financial issues and that directly is related to a drop in revenue. Mm. All right. Yeah, it's the fact that the economy is not great. Uh, consumers are not going out and spending money on casual fast dining anymore like not like they used to because it's unaffordable you can't do it right and if you are gonna go out to eat and if you're gonna spend a hundred dollars two hundred dollars you might as well go to a cheesecake factory unless you're taking a 304 out on a date right in which that case uh cheesecake factory is not good enough okay uh but this is a common story in, in the biden economy right this is par for the course this is what we've been seeing for the past three or four years but the liberal media has been gaslighting us, claiming that, no, nah, this is not real. This doesn't exist. Okay, it's being made up. All right, so what does this mean for, I guess, the future of these fast casual dining establishments? So when it comes to this fast casual industry, location is absolutely everything. So what I think we're going to continue seeing if this trend continues, which inflation is kind of not really going anywhere right now, um, we could be seeing more waves of restaurants closing. I think we're going to see the ones that are in locations that are thriving, they may continue to operate, but there is a silver lining to all of this because these restaurants are operating in great locations with big parking lots um, and good infrastructure. So what we could see is that this opening up more space for smaller business, locally owned businesses to come in and start operating. I don't think these types of restaurants are going to go away completely, mm -hmm. but I think that we're just going to start seeing maybe less and less of them.
Yeah, I would like to see less big chains and more mom and pop joints with unique offerings uh, in order to compete. And who knows? Maybe that's what happens. Again, that's kind of how capitalism works. OK, things just kind of seem to balance out over time. Right. Um, and I think that's what you're kind of saying here. OK, you're seeing how businesses naturally grow. They mature and then they, you know, kind of die. <laughs> OK, and then new businesses, you know, come in and fill their void. And that's what happens, right? And Biden's inflation, again, is, is accelerating that, okay? It is essentially uh, making some of these businesses we used to know and love, these restaurants, these fast casual places, yeah, they're making it so, hey, you know, their businesses are dying, right? They're going away and they'll be replaced by new businesses that hopefully can thrive and survive when we finally get some relief from Biden's inflation, which probably will only happen once we get him out of office, right? <laughs> once we get Biden out of office, uh, hopefully uh, businesses will see some relief because we'll have some economic policies in place that will be pro-growth, okay, without uh, increasing inflation. But we'll see. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a Black Conservative Perspective. Peace.